Good afternoon. This is David Unsworth, host of the Pan Am Post English podcast. What is the deep state? The phrase coined by Congressional aide Mike Lofgren in 2014 refers to an alleged entity that coordinates efforts by government employees and others to influence state policy without regard for democratically elected leadership. It now appears that, in the wake of Donald Trump's improbable November victory, members of the Obama administration actively conspired to undermine and sabotage Trump's transition team and his presidency. Trump won a free and fair Democratic election, prompting holdovers from the Obama administration, specifically CIA Director John O. Brennan, FBI Director James Comey, and their deputies, to immediately begin an effort to discredit, delegitimize, and ultimately impeach Donald Trump. Is there a deep state working to oppose Trump? Is the investigation into Trump-Russia collusion biased? What measures can be taken to ensure the political independence of the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA? The latest bombshell this week reveals that Peter Strzok, formerly the FBI's number two counterintelligence official, who was revealed to be exchanging highly partisan anti-Trump messages with his girlfriend, was intimately involved in sensitive FBI investigations. What will be the ultimate result of the Peter Strzok angle? As it stands now, Devin Nunes, a California Republican, wants to hold the FBI in contempt of Congress for failing to provide information about Strzok. Today in particular, we're going to be discussing a piece in the Washington Times written by Rowan Scarborough entitled, Team Obama Attempted Stealth Coup by Undermining Trump. The most salient uh, point of this uh, story this week involves uh, exactly what Peter Strzok was doing and what he was supervising. Here is the bombshell, and it doesn't have to do with Trump, it has to do with Clinton. Strzok is alleged to be the individual who, during James Comey's investigation of Hillary's, Hillary Clinton's email troubles, changed the wording from, quote, grossly negligent to extremely careless. This is most likely what led to Hillary Clinton not facing any criminal indictment. I mean, this is a bombshell of a revelation. We have a guy here who is a highly, highly, extremely, rapidly partisan Democrat who really is responsible for making this decision, which had tremendous ramifications for the 2016 presidential election, tremendous ramifications for our country. And now we learn that, at the very least, the Office of Inspector General is now reviewing Strzok's role in the email Clinton investigation. I mean, this should be troubling, right? Clearly, uh, even if you work for the federal government, even if you're in the FBI or the CIA, you have a right to vote, you have a right to have your political opinions, but... Should someone who appears to be a highly partisan operative who is involved in the most sensitive high-level investigations by the FBI in recent memory, how does someone like this get to end up making these decisions? And component two of this involves uh, Andrew Reisman, who is uh, one of Robert Mueller's top prosecutors. It's now revealed that uh, during the Trump transition, uh, when acting Attorney General Sally Yates refused to defend Trump's travel ban, uh, Weissman wrote a deeply congratulatory email to her in which he said, I am so proud and in awe. Thank you so much. All my deepest respect. That travel ban this week was upheld in a 7-2 decision by the Supreme Court. And mind you, that decision included the approval of two Democratic appointees. Stephen Breyer, who was appointed by Clinton, and Olega Kagan, who was appointed by Obama. Only uh, uh, Justices Sonia Sotomayor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg opposed the decision to uphold the travel ban. I mean, not to go on, an, on a tangent here from our, the topic of this podcast, but uh, in, a, in a nation such as Syria, where a third of the country is controlled by ISIS, a third by al-Qaeda, a third by... Uh, Bashar al-Assad, all of whom despise the United States and its interests around the world. How on earth are we possibly going to vet Syrian refugees? I mean, we clearly need to be doing something for Syrian refugees, but 
taking them into the United States by the tens or hundreds of thousands is clearly not the solution here. And the vetting procedures for them would be extremely difficult to undertake. So when we're talking about the deep state and we're talking about uh, Obama's national security team working together to undermine Trump as a candidate, uh, Trump as a uh, president-elect, and Trump as a president, uh, we are talking about deputies here, but we're talking about much higher than that. We are talking about John Brennan, who was Obama's CIA director from 2013 to 2017. An interesting fact about John Brennan, in 1976, he voted for the Communist Party USA candidate for president, Gus Hall. Uh, Brennan has done really nothing to disguise his utter contempt for Trump. He despises Trump, and he's been very, very involved in the investigation uh, of, of Trump and his contacts with the Russian government. When was the last time that a sitting president began a criminal investigation of the presumptive nominee of the opposition political party? Now, this investigation was based on the now highly discredited dossier by British intelligence agent Michael Steele. Obama's CIA director John Brennan was key in promoting the FBI investigation of Trump, and he's hardly shied away from it. He, in fact, he's talked very publicly about his involvement in promoting this Trump-Russia collusion narrative, uh, and to this date there is still not a shred of evidence of any collusion of any kind. This is a coup d'etat. This is an attempt to overthrow a democratically elected government. Whether you love Trump or whether you hate Trump, he is the legitimate president of the United States. He won the Electoral College by a comfortable margin. He is the president. The American people elected him, not Russia. Now, this is what Brennan has to say. I was aware of intelligence and information about contacts between Russian officials and U.S. persons that raised concerns in my mind about whether or not those individuals were cooperating with the Russians, either in a written, witting, or unwitten fashion. And it served as the basis for the FBI investigation to determine whether such collusion or cooperation occurred. Now this prompted Peter King, New York Republican, to respond, There should be an investigation of what the Russians did, but also investigation of John Brennan and the hit job he seems to be orchestrating against the president-elect. And this is a hit job. There is a deep state. There is a deep-seated element in power in Washington, D.C., uh, in the CIA, in the State Department, in the NSA, in the FBI, who utterly despise Trump. They want to perpetuate uh, this two-party system, uh, the prevailing global order that has been perpetuated by the Bushes and the Clintons and the Obamas, and they do not want to lose their power. And even if you utterly despise Trump, and I understand uh, people on the right, people on the left, libertarians, moderates, there are many people who hate Trump, and I, they have some legitimate points. But nonetheless, this is a serious problem. And the, the, the mainstream media is going to do everything they can to sweep this under the rug. But it's becoming clearer and clearer with every passing day that this was orchestrated by the Obama administration, to discredit, to undermine, and ultimately to remove Trump from office. Now, let's review the Russia collusion investigation. There is still not a shred of evidence. Let's review what these charges are. The email hacks of the DNC, which revealed bias against Bernie Sanders and favoritism to Hillary Clinton, and the allegations of biased news coverage at RT and Sputnik News, never mind that they are barely watched by an American audience. Who else do we have here? Uh, James Clapper, Obama's uh, Director of National Intelligence, another noted anti-Trumper. The Obama administration wanted to sabotage the Trump administration in a way never seen before. That's never been seen in a previous transfer of power. We pride ourselves here in the United States on a peaceful transition of power. Uh, we, we've with one uh, an unfortunate interruption in the 1860s, we have had peaceful transitions of power here 
for 230 years. We have the most successful and stable government in the history of the world. And the left is just going to ignore what Obama is doing here. They're, they are not going to cover it as news. They are not going to give it the gravity that it deserves. I mean, there, we need a full investigation into what Obama's national security uh, a community, what his national security advisors, what his national security team was doing after Trump became a candidate when Trump was president-elect and in Trump's first few months in office. Oh, and, and what, what does James Comey play into all this? How does James Comey play into all this? Uh, this highly discredited dossier, uh, which it turns out the Hillary Clinton campaign paid $12 million to fund, was used as a pretext to target Trump's transition team to authorize a wiretap of campaign volunteer Carter Page. And this has led to all kinds of process crimes. I mean, they're not going to get uh, Trump associates on real crimes, so they get them on process crimes. You testify before the FBI, you make a misstatement, you're charged with lying to the FBI. Now, no one is suggesting that uh, these people working on the Trump campaign are rocket scientists. Clearly, all of the other candidates in the race snapped up the top talent. There's no doubt about that. They, uh, the deep state did not want to go to work for Donald Trump. They wanted to work for a Jeb Bush or a Marco Rubio or a John Kasich or even perhaps a Ted Cruz. Anyone but Donald Trump. Uh, James Comey has done some highly irregular things here. And it's quite clear that Comey is partisan as well. He is uh, anti-Trump. He is pro-Hillary Clinton. Uh, a couple of very strange things that he's done. During this ru alleged Russian hack of DNC email servers, DNC computer servers, do you know that Comey did not even call for the seizure of those servers? He, he, that was well within his authority. This was one of the biggest news stories of the year, one of the biggest FBI investigations in history. But Comey leaves it to a company called CrowdStrike to conduct the investigation and report back to the FBI. What? You've, you've got to be kidding me. A foreign government has hacked in to the servers of one of our leading political parties in, in, in dropping bombshells about bias and favoritism on the part of the DNC, and Comey leaves it to a private company to conduct the investigation? What's even more troubling is that the Senate Judiciary Committee has now discovered that Comey wrote an exoneration statement of Hillary Clinton months before the investigation was concluded and before he had even interviewed Hillary Rodham Clinton. I mean, this is just nuts. I mean, when you have uh, someone like Peter Strzok or... Uh, Gabe McCabe working for you, it's not very surprising. The people who Obama put into power had absolutely no interest in going after Hillary Clinton and every interest in the world in going after Donald Trump. Donald Trump. And, and if you look at who federal government employees contributed money to, it, it's something along the lines of 20 to 1 that they gave money to uh, Donald Trump, uh, I'm sorry, to Hillary Clinton. In most departments of the federal government, 90% or more of campaign contributions went to Hillary Clinton. And why is that a surprise? Trump is opposing the federal government bureaucracy. He's opposing the deep state. And more than anything, he wants to cut government spending. He wants to uh, fire many of these government employees, these federal bureaucrats who are earning their $200,000 salary and incredibly generous uh, pension and health care and benefits packages. So, of course, they're not going to support Donald Trump. They're going to support uh, Hillary Clinton, who is going to just keep business as usual. Ultimately, we have a serious problem here for democracy. And even if you utterly despise Donald Trump, you have to see that there's a serious problem when these are the people, people like Peter Strzok and people like Andrew Weissman, highly partisan Democrats who utterly despise Donald Trump in every way, shape, or form, 
And they are the ones who are leading these investigations. They are making the key decisions. They are pulling the levers of power. So clearly, I mean, Donald Trump, the FBI director, serves at the pleasure of the president. That has never been in dispute. Donald Trump had every right to fire James Comey. I mean, the way James Comey bungled the Hillary Clinton email investigation, uh, he should have been fired from the get-go. Trump said he was going to fire him uh, all the way through the campaign show. Trump was entirely consistent on that. When did Trump waver from that? When did Trump say, well, you know what, uh, Comey's really doing a good job, I'm going to keep him on for four years? The FBI is in crisis mode, and yes, I understand the mainstream media is going to do everything they can to diminish this, and the conservative media is going to try to play this up, but if you put aside your political biases for a moment here, it's clearly a serious problem that the Obama administration was working to undermine the Trump administration even before Trump took office on January 20th. This has been David Unsworth with the Pan Am Post English Podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.